product engineering problem and uh, basically I want to just give you uh, almost a real life situation that we kind of already know the answer but uh, this will actually mathematically prove it and then can't maybe give your uh, maybe bridge the gap between your intuition and your mathematic um, foundation as well so first of all um, Jacob is pedaling his bike. Let's investigate at which point his pedaling will make the most amount of torque if the force is constant. Uh, first of all, I don't see any forces here, so just imagine that there's always a force down. And I'm just going to say that force is F, okay, for all of them. Okay, so let me draw this in just a vector form, that way we don't have to think about it really. You just kind of, it, it presents itself almost. Um, this first one is, first of all, the arm goes up and the force goes down. Uh, for here, what we have is a 45 degree angle. Remember our previous discussions about perpendiculars. So you can kind of see as we draw these, you can tell which one, hint, 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 which one will have the greatest amount of torque. Just based off which one has the most, uh, is most closely aligned to the perpendicular line. So, let me just keep going at this. And this one is going to be a little weird. Just to kind of keep it clear, I'm going to put it on the tail end like that. Okay, so good, force F, force F, force F, force F, force F, now let me come up with different R's, this will be R1, this will be R2, this will be R3, this will be R4, and this will be R5, okay, let me just figure out for you what the R's are, okay, R1. Vector R1, that's going to be pretty simple for J, okay? Um, one thing I forgot to label here, this is 4 inches. Um, no reason, I just gave it a number so that we can follow. So the length of the actual pedal is uh, 4 inches, okay? So R1 is going to be 4J, okay? Well, what about over here? R2. This one's already getting complicated, but don't fret. Cosine 45 degrees. Remember, it's all in the components, right? What's the Rx? What's the Ry? Plus 4 sine 45. Remember, this is your Rx right here. This is your Ry. Okay, so let's keep going. Oh, sorry, let's, let's actually come up with a number here so we don't maybe hang in. 2.83i plus 2.83j. Okay. Let's keep going. R3 is going to equal 4i. R4. This one's going to equal 2.83i minus 2.83j. And then finally R5, 
which is equal to minus 4j. So you can kind of see how it just all wraps around. Um, rather than worrying about it, let's just hop right in. Um, I'll, I'll break down the first couple of them, and then I'm going to kind of just leave it up to you to essentially, you know, do work. So, M1 equals R1 cross F. That's equal to... Let's break it on down here. I, J, K... That's 0, 4, 0, 0, negative 90, 0, right? Well, you break that down again, you'll have... You'll actually get 0, I, plus, or minus, right? 0, J hat, plus 0, K hat. So the whole point of this, and actually the reason that I did it over here, was that this will equal zero. You will have zero moment in this. But that kind of makes sense, right? Because all the force is going into the joint. If you think about the pedal being at the top above where it spins, it just sits on there. It pushes into the pin. It doesn't, doesn't cause it to rotate. So, that makes sense even intuitively. So let's break it down. Let's, let, let's go on to the next one where we can maybe, um, well, obviously we'll get a, a moment this time. So, we're going to just break this one down. I'm not going to show you all the little steps, but, you know, I, I'll show you this part. This is always fun. 283, 283, 0. And then you have 0, negative 90, 0, right? Well, if you actually, if you work your way through that, right, you'll have, once again, 0 times i minus 0 times j plus, and I'm just going to give you the answer here, it's going to be negative 254.7 k hat. Okay? What this means is that you have negative 254.7 pound inches of torque at this point in the pedal. Very impressive. Negative determines that it's that this thing is rotating in a clockwise manner because a positive torque would be counterclockwise. So just remember that. It's going to be a spin in this direction. Okay, so let's go on. We can do the next one. And this one, you might, oops, capital M. Okay, might be pleasantly surprised by this one. J, K. This one's going to equal 4, 0, 0, 0, negative 90, 0. Go through this, you'll get your I, which is 0. I times 0 minus J times 0 plus, and then you have the big one, which is going to equal negative 360 k hat. So your actual number is going to be negative 360 k hat. Cool! And we knew that point was going to be the highest point of torque because there's nothing resisting it. All of that force is going into making this thing go round. All of it is going to make it spin. None of it is going, there's no component that's going this way to the pin. It's all causing it to spin. 
Okay, well, let's finish up. Uh, M equals... You have I, J hat, K hat. This one's going to equal, what, 2.83, negative 2.83, and 0, 0, negative 90, 0. And I can just give you the solution to this one as essentially the same thing. It's going to give you the same number as 254.7. Okay. Just remember, one thing I do want you to notice is that these two are identical. And uh, that kind of makes sense because, you know, it's a sinusoidal curve. So, anyway, I hope you guys found this useful. Hit up the 3D problem.